the Joe Rogan experience. And I just went on a riff right there, but the thing is, these but isn't that what yeah. you do though. Like, yeah. yeah. One of the things that I yeah. when when anybody ever talks yeah. about you to me, mm. they 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 say, well, 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 he's all over the place, mm. and I say, I think that he's got a different power source. Like, if you look at the way everybody interfaces with the world, is if there's a universal power, most people have like a 20 watt charger. Mm. The way I describe you, I say, I think that motherfucker's got like a 150 watt charger, mm. and these ideas are just coming at him. So you do go on these rants that sometimes need to be dissected into individual things, but overall, you're in incredibly productive. So my question is, why do you, why do people think there's something wrong with you? Yeah. This well, is, but I legitimately like you've been medicated. They've they've put you away, right? They've yeah. brought you me to med. How did that happen? Well, well, I, I'll say these two things. I think, uh, very three dimensionally. I don't think in the black and white lines that I've been programmed to think in, and I and I think in full color. So when I talk, I have to describe a thought in five ways. You know, we, we enjoy food that has multiple seasoning in it. We enjoy music that has multiple instruments. So when I talk, it's not a rant. It's a symphony yes. of ideas. And when you collect them, you say, oh, these are all these things that connect. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just tell the truth. And telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. That's simply it. But none of the yeah. things you're saying are crazy. None of the things you said are crazy. It's yeah. fascinating the mm -hmm. way you think yeah. because I can see that you're thinking in all these different layers and you're looking at things from all these different perspectives and they all come together out of your mouth in like a tornado of ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone wants to just have a conversation with you back and forth, I could see where they would go, this guy's crazy. He just doesn't stop. He's just ranting. But what I'm seeing is just you are a very thorough thinker. You're thinking at things independently. But you're thinking of things in a, a, a massive perspective. Now, who convinced you that that's bad? Is it have, have you always been this way, or were you less? Is it was it less manageable before? Did you have issues with it before? Yeah, I believe before I found Christ and gave my life to God, I would try to lean on my own understanding, and that's a, the universe is like a, a black hole of information. What do you like, mean by your own understanding? Meaning when people ask Einstein, said, you're the smartest person, what would you like to know? He, his, his, Einstein's response was, I'd like to understand the mind of God. Meaning, meaning God is all-knowing, and we can only know or see. And for me as a visionary, we can only know or see what God allows us to see and what he feels we're ready to see and understand to, to maximize what our Maslow's hierarchy and need chart is, you know, what sets our dopamines, what sets our serotonins off, what makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. Basically, like, you know, we, we did a good deed and it's like it was somehow where, you know, you know, just doing a beat for a famous person or just doing a beat for um, a local dope rapper really meant a lot to me when I was 14 years old doing a beat for just anyone famous that had a major record deal was a lot to me at age 19. Me being able to, you know, put out my own music and put my own, I was a lot to me at age 24. Meaning as I grow, God sets new stages in the game of life for me that you get your satisfaction. Like Maslow's hierarchy of need is like our satisfaction chart. What makes us feel whole and uh, accomplished as a, as a as a human being. So as I go through these different levels, there's times where I would use confidence when I knew what I was doing, and I would use arrogance when I didn't know what I was doing, but I'd rather use arrogance than to let someone d uh, diminish my idea of myself because that is what keeps us going. Hope actually keeps us alive. Anybody, you ask most people, it's like, do you want tomorrow to come? And they say, yes, they, they, have, they have hope for it, but I went from having confidence and arrogance to having faith. And faith is the opposite of fear. And that created this fearless approach that I have. And that's what made now has made me the fearless leader that I am, that I've like crystallized into the leader that 
my mom always knew I would be when kids followed me in preschool. The leader that people saw when we changed the sound of music. The leader when we changed uh, the, the, the sneaker industry. The leader in what we're doing with, uh, with farming and with, with shelters. When I was building you know, the homeless shelters uh, uh, a couple years ago and visiting parks and, and then going to Skip Row and understanding the, uh, uh, the dy dy dynamics and empathizing with what actual mental health issues are. Not someone, you know, telling their truth or being exhausted and then being labeled as such. Like I am So that's yeah. what you felt happened to you. Like you were telling absolutely. the truth and you were exhausted and they labeled you as mentally unhealthy. Yes, absolutely. Am I saying this right? That yeah. what happened with you is you feel like maybe or you probably feel like that having this higher calling and recognizing this higher power was the the glue that kept your thoughts together. It kept your mind straight, and it kept you on a righteous path. So yes. instead of being scattered with all these crazy thoughts and being exhausted and being labeled manic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like we talked before, and you were saying that they had you on medication, but the medication fucked with your creativity. It fucked with all kinds of things. Or it blocked my ability to channel what God wanted me to do. But we're all... We're all on medication right now. Did you use toothpaste with fluoride today? It blocks your pineal <laughs> gland. And they put children on it. And we put we put our kids on it. You know, we it's inside the, the, the deodorants that we use. It's all these things to create like a disconnect to God to serve that. It's like, are you serving man? Or are you serving the the one and only master? But what yeah. did they tell you? Yeah. When when they said that they were going to put you on medication, what did they put you on, and what what did they tell you? One of my favorite things that they did is they put me on this medication that made me uh, gain a lot of weight, and I said I'm not going to take this, and they said, okay, we got a medication you could take where you won't gain weight, and this shows you they were trying to kill a superhero, slowly trying to kill genius, trying to make me not feel like I could run for president, make me not feel like I can go. Uh, be born in Atlanta, grow up on the south side of Chicago, go into music, go and win all these Grammys, change the sound of music and the, the look of stage performances, all that, and then still end up in $53 million of debt. What music industry has people going to the exact debt of the house that they think they're going to buy after the tour is over. And it's, and it's, it's strategized. There's criminals all over everyone's almost accounts in the music industry. It's not a safe place. It's a, it's a treacherous place. So it's filled with money. As soon yeah. as things are filled with money, they're filled with people that are trying to take advantage of other people. It's filled with money. Bees come to honey. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they, yeah. put, they put you on this shit because you were exhausted? What did they put you on? Um, um, you know, I'm, I, can, I can research. I'm act, no, I'm I'm actually forgetting the exact medication okay. that okay. they had. Um, but what did it do yeah. to you? Uh, you? The main thing that it did is it destroyed my confidence. It made me this shell of who I really am. It like grayed over my eyes. It 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 made me. It made the Mustang not buck anymore. Mm. They sedated you. Yes. Yeah. And they, what was the, the thought process behind it? When you, when you talk to a doctor about this, what did they tell you was wrong with you? Uh, they, they told me I was bipolar. And I remember going on TMZ and saying, you know, slavery is a choice. And they medicated me for saying that. For having that opinion and saying it out loud but as i put those contracts up i'm saying this is a choice as i you know I, uh, you didn't mean people being abducted and brought into slavery and put into chains was a choice what you were talking about is people making decisions that would enslave them financially and enslave their life yeah but it was taken out of context and it was taken in the least charitable way and they decided to try to say, look at crazy Kanye. Look at this shit he's saying. Yeah. And then they medicate you. 
Yes. And the media is always taking anything out of context that isn't a part of the overall narrative. Yeah. That because there's, you know, like Hollywood and media has controlled so much of the narrative. And then you had Silicon Valley. And that's what's so beautiful about one of my heroes, Steve Jobs, because there wouldn't be a Silicon Valley or the Silicon Valley wouldn't be what it is today if Steve Jobs didn't make information accessible like this, which is still a bit controlled, but it feels like Twitter is the the safest, free, freest uh, mass platform to communicate on. And, you know, it's like they mess with Jack because of that, you know, you know. Well, it's uh, it's still censored. There's, there's a lot of mm. issues now, but I think that's mm. internal. I think that's people that are working there that are woke that want to stop people from saying certain things. And there, there's a lot of struggles with that today. And I, I it's unfortunate because I, I do agree that it's an, an unbelievable way to get ideas out there. Yeah. So, but it's also, it's a new thing, and it's mismanaged by the people that use it often. They don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it. Yeah. Every version of anything that man has made will be flawed. Episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience are now free on Spotify. That's right, they're free. From September 1st to December 1st, they're going to be available everywhere. But after December 1st, they will only be available on Spotify, but they will be free. That includes the video. The video will also be there. It'll also be free. That's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye.